go. Hello, everybody, and welcome, Megan. Thank you for being here today. So we had a, a little bit of a difficulty with our technology this morning, but we're all sorted. And um, today I wanted to introduce you to Megan Desire, a psychologist of 27 years, a parenting coach of 17 years, author, speaker, mentor, mum. Um, and I, Megan, I'm just feeling so incredibly privileged to get to speak to you today and just add some value to these mums' lives. Um, everyone, I think, already knows from all of my posts and, and enthusiasm for the speaker that Megan's specialty is dealing with teenagers, a phase of our kids' lives that I think we're so forewarned about from, from almost before our children were born. Um, and after being warned so many times, particularly with my daughter, um, I personally have a lot of fear about the teenage years. My kids are only two and four, so I still have a lot of time. Um, but I'm very excited for today's conversation. And thanks to your questions, we're going to be chatting about why teenagers are different, um, our role as teenagers' mum, how to eliminate the fear of dealing with teens, and why reparenting is just so, so critical. So Megan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, yeah, and, and just adding value to all of our lives. Okay, I'm so pleased to be on the Parent Hub. And as you're speaking, my heart is aching because you're in just the, the most perfect stage with your children right now. Uh, it's so adorable and it's so much easier than the teen years. Oh no! So are you justified? <laughs> Are you justified to feel nervous? Yes, you are. But I'm hoping I'm going to give you those perfect tips that you are going to really hold on to and try and remember. If not, just, you know, my number. <laughs> oh, man, I was hoping you were going to say there's nothing to worry about. But hopefully, yes, we're, we're excited to get to this. Um, so, Megan, I start all of these conversations with two questions that I think are really important. And the first one is, what do you wish that every mum knew? So I think that the, the first thing to know is that there is a radical change. And it surprises me over and over how many mothers reach out, with me, out to me. Almost it's like I've put the phone or my mobile phone on redial. They saying the same thing and bear in mind I've been in this field for so many years and moms are always saying the same things I don't know what's happened to my son I don't know what's happened to my daughter it's gone terribly wrong uh, uh, um, they're not listening or they're moody or they're withdrawn or they're speaking back or uh, what am I doing wrong so there's this constant concern about what am I doing wrong as a parent or what's gone wrong with my child you yeah. know I, I, gorgeous eight-year-old nine-year-old ten-year-old was adorable when we spoke so much and I was raising the renaissance man or I was had this perfect perfect little girl and and now blah 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 you know and then I yeah. hear all those all those worries and I always start off by saying you know there is a radical change and you, we have got to accept that there is there are sexual hormones pumping through a boy and a girl as they start hitting 12, 13, 14. There are brain changes. So there are neurological changes. The, the, you will notice your teenager's forehead change shape in front of your eyes, you know, and you're like, oh, my word. You know, he had that adorable little forehead and now he's got this huge bulbous you know yeah. forward what's going on smells change questions change criticism criticizing you change so there's such a radical change that it's it can be quite overwhelming because it happens it can happen quite fast mm. and then of course we get the smug moms and that's the thing that I think drives us all <laughs> mad as we get the smug moms are oh you know my 14 year old is still chatting to me an oh, angel. my 15 year old we, we we've got so much in common and we do everything together so I think it's like those those exceptional cases yeah. where the teenagers come upon families in a mild way that that really kind of worries so my second thing that I wish all moms would knew, knew is that you are going to see the possibility of withdrawal 
you are going to see um, out and out rejection sometimes. You are going to receive criticism and back chatting. You are, you are, you are. Um, you are also going to worry that the, the, the fact that you don't know everything and teenagers are now speaking to their best friends or they're speaking to their auntie or they're speaking to another mom, but they're not speaking to you. So, so do know there's, that is going to happen and there's nothing wrong with you and your relationship. There's just this uh, evolutionary impulse mm -hmm. for uh, teenagers to grow up and the the stage of the drama. So there's a drama going on. And the, on that stage, it's kind of mom and teen. Okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, the drama plays out first and foremost from with mom. And strangely enough, not with dad. It's 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 the most bizarre thing. And I see it over and over. And that's why, you know, I wrote this book, How to Raise a Man, but the modern mother's guide, because I wanted to to say to moms, there's something that happens, a peculiar thing happens with our teenagers and we get the kind of brunt of it first and you need to know it's normal. So that was the first thing that I really, really wanted to moms to know. And the second thing is do not take it personally. Do not take it personally. So if you can just remember that more than anything, that he's, he or she is not out to get you, you know, it's, it's like this yeah. is part of a normal, natural process. And so we've got to somehow develop the skill of lessening our own ego. And that is massive. So I wish all moms knew that, that try and work with your own ego and get your own ego out, out the way so that you haven't got an agenda about this kind of perfect parenting place yeah. that you want to be in and you're rather more present with where your your child or children are as they reach the teens so that was the first thing I wanted to say that I wish all moms I knew. love it thank you and I mean as we're talking about it I'm thinking so I'm a parenting coach and I work with a lot of mums of, of toddlers so young kids and, and I love the shift from from a few generations ago where we were kind of expected to just leave our kids. And I feel like there has been a big shift. Like parents want to be more proactive. They want to read the books. They want the information. Um, and as you were saying that, I think with that, with, with that work and effort that, that goes into those toddler years or a little bit beyond toddler years, I can imagine that it kind of cuts even more deeply when your teenager all of a sudden is difficult with you you know or like that relationship seems to be drifting apart because you're like well well so well said into this. So, well well mm -hmm. said so I don't know if we would have put our hands up to mm -hmm. this scenario where it says you know you give your life your soul your time you study you research you yeah. throw yourself into you know, into your parenting, into your yeah. homemaking. And then you've got a teenager saying that, chill, you know, mom, oh. get a life. <laughs> <I'm laughs> you, know, you, you don't understand, you know, and yeah. you're like saying, I do understand. Dude. I've got a library of books. I've read yeah. all the books. I don't even understand. understand. <laughs> and they're saying, no, you don't, you know. Oh. So there's no such thing as a perfect mom. Um, nor is there such a thing as a perfect dad, and especially for a teenager. And even if you got all the ticks, like all the ticks, like you, you, you picked up my book or another you know, book saying, you know, how to raise a teen, and you, you got all the ticks, the fit still doesn't work during those teenagers. And why? 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 And that's the most important thing. And, and it's, but I want to answer your question first. So I want to tell you why the fit doesn't work. But before that, I want to answer your second question because I've got it there and it's an awesome question. So okay. please ask it. Okay, so I'm going to ask the second question. And this, uh, so, so I've only just started with this question because it's a conversation that I really want to, to encourage and have. It's something that I've started having with my own kids as well, is that I want to change our relationship with, failure. I think that that 
failure and the fear of failure drive so many of our decisions. So it's something that I want to bring up more and more on the Parent Hub Facebook group. So I'm going to start asking all of the experts that come on, what is a failure that you've had in your life that afterwards and after you've gone through all the horrible things that came with that failure, that you look back and you're like, that failure actually changed my life. That was mm -hmm. helped me mm -hmm. in some way to grow. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a biggie and it's deep and it's very personal. And bear in mind that I was a much, much younger um, single mom at, at this time. And I made the mistake of wanting to be liked. I wanted validation, affirmation from my boys. I kind of was one of those moms that believe that you know my boys were the best and they were amazing um, and they're intelligent and they know the answers and of course those teenagers show up as smart and bright and memories of elephants and and point out everything that you've done right or wrong you know yeah. so they show up with that and I made the mistake of believing that they knew the answers mm -hmm. because they were I had, I kind of idealized them and, and, and thought they were absolutely just brilliant, you know, yeah. and, and of course we all do that, okay, and we all make the mistake, but on top of it, I was still at a stage where I was looking to them for validation, I was looking for them, to them for affirmation, so I was judging my parenting based on the shifting sands of a teenager and two teenagers in my home. And, and that was a huge mistake. So obviously then it meant, because I was looking to them to be liked and wanting to make parent decisions that they gave me a tick for and said, amazing yeah. mom, you know, that's fantastic. We the love the fact that you, you know, you, we love the fact that you, took us away from our computer games you know yeah. we think you're terrific you know? no so my boys were coming up against me criticizing and I was trying so much harder to be like to be affirmed and that is a huge huge mistake we have got to be the adult in the room yeah. we have to be the adult in the room first and foremost then we have to be the parent and what does that mean that we stand on our values and the values we believe in and we find that assertiveness and strength within ourselves to to discover who we are the other thing which is a huge call for us as parents huge call is that in this attempt to grow up as adults and be the adult in the room, we've got to get our emotional EQ in place. So we need to learn how to um, self-regulate our own emotions, calm ourselves down, not overreact. Otherwise, you're going to just be on high fire the yeah. whole time reacting with the teenager because of what they they come back at you at or, or what they're up to or they're keeping secrets from you or they're not telling you everything or they prefer to spend their weekend with another family oh yeah. and then for someone like me you know who just wanted to be liked and feel like I'd done it a good job and I'd done it all right and mm -hmm. it was just heartbreaking yeah. to discover yeah that I wasn't the heroine in the room anymore. I wasn't that mother that was like, just loved and adored. So I had to go up and, and I had to go up fast. And it didn't just take a flash. It took me time and hence my work. I threw myself into uh, researching and discovering um, the adolescence and particularly for me it was male adolescence so I had to understand masculinity and then of course in understanding masculinity I had to understand femininity and yeah. and the different feminine energies you know mm -hmm. so our feminine gen energies are, are quite different from the masculine energies and many moms are are kind of you know, really comfortable in their fem femininity. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've got all these kind of gender fluidities, but there are many moms, no matter what, however they classify themselves, that, that love being feminine. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you've got these 
strong masculine yeah. energies in your home, you know, that that are growing up fast. So it, it can be difficult for us. And it was that was certainly difficult for me. So as a result, what did I learn? I learned to grow up. I learned that my emotional regulation was essential. I learned that I had to practice mindfulness. I had to to get involved in my meditations, my yoga, my nature walks on a daily basis in order to just learn how to regulate this kind of um, high energy and this, and, the, and, this, and this need to, to kind of be this happy home and family, you know, and be this mom that was like this perfect mom. I had to let go of all of that but I still had to put in boundaries. I couldn't, I had to get the power play right. I couldn't now hand over all power to my boys and say, well, you seem smarter than me. You know, you, you run things. Yeah. And, and, and I had to find that assertiveness, confidence, uh, grounding within myself. And honestly, and this is the truth, mindfulness saved me. So that today I now have good relationships with my grown-up boys. And, and that is so satisfying. But I needed, I had to like really throw myself into to wellness and, and mindfulness. So that's why I'm all about conscious parenting, Love all it. about it, you know, and self-awareness. And I, I feel like as you're talking, you know, and I know a lot of the, the parents on this group have younger kids. I have younger kids, so I'm always trying to relate to me at the moment. Um, and I think my toddler years now, as you're saying, that it's just such a good foundation of, of kind of practice, you know, because you are having the meltdowns and the tantrums. And, and my four-year-old, he's nearly five, he is starting to challenge me a bit on things and i I find myself mm. reactive to that. Um, a a is it a boy or a girl? Yeah, it's a boy. <laughs> yes, because they get a testosterone surge at five. Yeah. And so there's this, this sudden kind of surge and then it settles down again. So and it will so settle I'm down again. We're feeling it. But and so, so on, the, on the other side of those tests and those, those, yeah, just those difficult moments, you still get the love and the cuddles and the... You know, you do get that validation and the playfulness and like all those. And mommy, I want to marry you. Yeah. Yes. So, so I feel like like it is just such good practice for for mums with younger kids to kind of use those opportunities to regulate and be able to to learn those emotional tools that we need at more difficult times. Like yes, know. and and I think it, and also I don't think we must forget, especially in your stage. Please, please, please do not forget to have a life. Yeah. Please. It's because if you don't have a life yourself outside of just being a mother or running a home, um, you can feel in a real scramble during the teenage years because the, our, our, our children will be kind of pulling away from us or pushing us away depending on how controlling you are yeah. so I don't let me I, I really need to make that point you know very strongly yeah. uh, about what makes a good mother son mother daughter relationship in the mm. teen years but I think that practicing now during the teen years to self-regulate to find those techniques of self-awareness knowing where your triggers are coming from what is really going on? And ask yourself that. Why am I overreacting to the fact that my daughter was pushed on the field? Mm -hmm. Like she didn't hurt herself. She was pushed by another little girl and, and she fell down and she cried. And, and why am I overreacting to that? What's going on in me? So we yeah. need to kind of discover where those triggers are coming from in us. Was it because you were bullied as a, a little girl, you know, on the playing field? Was it that that you couldn't stand up for yourself? And now you, everything's like showing up and coming up within you as you witness it. So our children and their lives are our best mirrors and our best teachers. And we need to discover those triggers within ourselves. And if we can try and get that done early, like yeah. if you could be kind of just self-reflecting, journaling, writing notes, 
reminding yourself that at whatever stage your child is right now, whether it's five, six, seven, what was coming up for you then? So sort of just reflect back. And you don't have to do a whole therapy thing. It's just a little bit of self-awareness and consciousness. So you don't have to go back to therapy and unearth all yeah. your, you know, your childhood memories. No, I'm not suggesting that. Consciousness is an, is an incredible thing. Self-awareness and consciousness is amazing. So all you, it's, it's a high intelligence. It's, it's, it's something that um, uh, helps kind of prompt and direct us in life is this, this deep knowing and self-awareness that is within all of us. And so you just sit with that. Like if you notice something during these toddlers years, let's say it's a meltdown and you really feel yourself completely lose it. You just say, what's really going on here? And, and maybe it's as simple as, actually, I'm just too stretched. I'm yeah. too stressed out. And then you know that, you know, and that's a good and then I, I absolutely love, actually, that you brought this up. Because in, in my work, almost every single one of the mums that come to me, they come because of their kids, because their, their children are misbehaving, or their children are having too many tantrums, or hitting people on the field, or not eating, or whatever it is. And very, very quickly, we go down a route of, well, why is that triggering for you? Um, and, and I've loved that journey of, of mums being able to explore that side of them, you know, where we see, yeah, we, like you said, we, we, our kids are the best mirrors. Um, and yeah. I wanted to also get back to something that you said, because I think that this is very, very important. And so I'm going very off track with this conversation. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm happy. Um, you said don't lose yourself because it's, it becomes really difficult then when they are teenagers, when they are pushing you away and you've dedicated your whole life into these beings and you, you almost are like, well, who, who am I? You know, and then people tell you, and I, I feel this even with, like I said, a five-year-old or I have clients with six or seven-year-olds when they start sports at school and their school day gets a bit longer and people are like, well, just do something fun. And they're like, like I, I don't actually know what brings me fun anymore what I like yes yeah um so I think that's such 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 a good a good thing to bring up is yes I I say to moms with you know with with I have in, in the past I'm not um I'm not a therapist for moms with young kids anymore uh, but in the past you know I would say just start with one thing I mean go to go to a pottery class or an art class or yeah. or or you know, take up your sport again or or have a kind of really part-time job that you feel uh, uh, is part of your passion, you know? Yeah. And, and I found, you know, for, for myself, studying was something I could easily do and loved. So it was part of my passion. I just am that peculiar person. So so, you know, taking up a, a course and now it's so easy to do a course online yeah. and then you, you're fueling um, a, a part of your own life that sits outside of just family and kids and, and, and husbands or wives, you know, you, you've got um, something that you can kind of feel that it is yours to grow. And, and you hold on is- to that identity. Absolutely. And do not forget that during the teenage years, just as you've seen in the early years, like around, I'd say, four, five, six, where you you get this identity formation that's happening, you know, around, I want to be a, you know, I want to be a mermaid or um, I I don't know if Spider-Man's still a hit, but I think he's back again. (laughs) I want to be the hero or I want to be you know, I want to be a truck driver or I want to be a, whatever it is that's coming up, you know. Um, uh, I don't want to make Jerry a a gender stereotypes here because it's not relevant. Yeah. But um, whatever's coming up in that identity formation, it comes back again in full force during the teenage years. And that identity, there's such a need for individuating this and, and being an individual and stepping outside of the family system, challenging values just because they can, challenging mom, challenging dad, just because they, they, they want to assert that yeah. need for their own independence. And, and during that challenging time, 
there's a strange quirk in nature because we are coming up to kind of our 40s and for some moms who are older, like their 50s, and, and we hitting perimenopause at a time, you know, our teenage girls yeah. are like starting their own periods or our boys are like surging with testosterone. We're going through our own hormonal shifts. So often it like dovetails like that. And, and, and therefore what is happening for us? Also identity formation. Yeah. So we back in the throes of identity formation around 40 and sometimes as late as 50. Um, and, and our teenagers are doing the same thing. I mean, many moms and dads are like trying to date again mm. because they've, you know, ended up in a divorce and then they're trying to date again. And we're yeah. doing similar developmental phases yeah. At the same time, it is such a challenge, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's why I'm just so passionate about information. I'm like you, like I, I found my own passion in reading and, and being interested in the stuff and then sharing it with other people because I feel like yes. just an awareness of those things helps you be more present and be more patient with some of those changes, you know, and, and just yes. bring more awareness to those situations. Yes. And also do not forget to be more confident. It helps yeah. you be a little more confident that you that's, can stand on the values and the truths and the things that you believe yeah. in. And that's essential for a teenager. A teenager needs that kind of solid lighthouse. Mm. So I love that image, you know, where it's like, okay, I can be your solid lighthouse. You don't always want to like follow where I'm shining the light, yeah. but but at least I can believe in it and I can yeah. stay there. Whereas, as I said to you, the mistake I made is that kept kind of shifting for me because I was yeah. allowing um, my teenagers to pull me there. Yeah. And, and that's not a good idea. We need to find that solidness within ourselves mm -hmm. and, and our values, what we're confident in, who we are as a person, what our passions are, what we enjoy. And of course, as I said, go back to who who am I we are back there again during um the teenage years yeah and I mean I know with toddlers it's true and, and I'm guessing that it's true with teenagers as well that they almost push those boundaries to 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 feel safe sometimes like they they want that like you talk about a lighthouse they want to know that that something's there and something's staying the same um, and at the time, they may resist that. And whether it's like, like you said, saying no to TV games, they're, they're going to resist it. But at the end of the day, they, it does intrinsically make them feel loved and cared for and safe because those boundaries yes. are there. Yes. And, and the world's so uncertain. Yeah. So I always say to my moms who are raising teenagers, I'm so sorry. It's like you have to be the most boring person in the room. Oh, you know, no. Teenage years because you, you've got to find that consistency within yourself. Yeah. A, a consistency, structure, routine, and and you know, and get a laugh, you know. And so uh, parents of teenagers, you know, I just say it's not long. It's only like four years that you've got to kind of yeah. hold this line. Then you can go back to Ibiza and you know, <laughs> lose yourself in a party. Um, but you've got to kind of toe the line and be consistent and, and, and present. So you kind of find your goody two shoes just for a short bit while they sort of 14, 15, 16, 17. I think it's really important important for us just to be as solid as we can as as the adults in the room but that doesn't mean that we can't have our fun but just yeah. don't do it on your own weekends away and, and Megan, so on, on that topic I mean we've discussed a bit about the the natural the hormonal physical sexual changes that happen when kids do become teens what is a role I mean we you're saying set those boundaries but could you give us some other things that that as a mum we can really aid that developmental shift and um, yes. keep those relationships yes. together rather than driving them apart what yes are some, what's some advice? so the first thing and and the first thing and I'm, I'm sort of almost feel like I'm speaking directly to you as well you know what 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 we hear yes. um because you're going to be going through this the first thing is grow up in your parenting style mm. grow up in your parenting style the prep schools days are behind you so those lists and those agendas and the schedules and the directing that, that we do during the prep school years has to be put aside. 
and we've got to step into a more grown up uh, parent style. Mm-hmm. And that fir- the first thing is our own self awareness and 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 being much more conscious of our own reactivity and our own fears and needs. So we growing up as a human being, there's a beautiful opportunity to um, uh, to catalyze this own self-development and own self-growth during the teenage years and it's 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 fantastic so that's why I call it the sacred practice because it is a sacred practice you Mm. you get to to really do your last kind of surge of of growing up into your own adulthood so grow up your parenting style The, the next thing is control okay so the more you are now and 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 so many moms for you base your entire parenting on control for you so if it's about um controlling his school choices controlling his friends you know controlling his bedtime controlling his computer games control yeah. and so focused on being the one in charge it's you're going to battle during the teenage years so as the prep school years start lessening and and you're moving towards the senior school years really start facing your own control needs and 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 start letting go and 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 sharing um and, and having much more engagement around what their needs, their wants are. Who is this personality that's growing? What is your son or your daughter's temperament? How is it different to yours? What are their preferences? Do they sleep more than you? Are they less energetic than you? Are they more untidy than you? Well, you know, wh- who is this beautiful being yeah. in the room that, that's growing up in front of you and, and giving up your agenda of wanting to control that? they're the best you know their performance is the best they everything they do is just idealized and we've got to give that up mm-hmm. and 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 give over more mm-hmm. and so i'm also that using that essential. yeah and saying that i think a lot of people we want our kids to perform and and do well because also we see that as a reflection of us and our own parenting so i guess that's another controlled kind of no it's terrible and then we think that they they you know they kind of are us and they're not us they are separate so I think it's it's discovering now at the stage you are at and really think about it and say this this is not me you know that this is a, a child developing into their own adult and my role is to create a platform a space for them to become the best that they are going to be yeah for them to feel loved held cared for nourished and yet become who they are going to be separate to, to us and that's got to dawn on us and it's a it's a big big dawning yeah. and and it's not just saying oh i know they're going to be their own individual it's not that. It's like really feeling that. Feeling it's like really that. going in deep and saying, okay, these beautiful beings in my home soon are going to have at some stage their own home, their yeah. own life, their own relationships, their, their own values that may not be mine. You know, I had one family who's, who's, who was anti-religion, like completely atheist, yeah. and their son became hectically hectically religious in their own home you know and it was like they were like you know and and he became from which is like orthodox real orthodox jewish and he wanted to eat in a kosher way and he had to have a kitchen separately you know to the family yeah, it was hectic hard. but that was his choice and he and he needed to explore that when he, he was to find a way to support that and you got to find a way. How do I support their independence, their individuality, their identity, their own assertiveness? How do I support that? Still have a life myself yeah. and still operate as a family. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. word. You know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to navigate. And then, Megan, how do you? I mean, because that, 
it can seem a little bit contrasting between like this idea that we do have to let go of control a bit um, and as you said earlier still sticking to those boundaries so like which bound well how do we know which boundaries how do you know which boundaries which one i think we good? you know i think the first thing is from now on out for you and, and moms at, at your stage mm -hmm. with little ease, work on your relationship and trust, mm -hmm. relationship and trust, and, and go to the surefire relationship skills, which are about hanging out together, spending time together, spending time and understanding and listening and being there not just about telling, doing, so not just yeah. the transactional stuff. Hang out, put your cell phone down, put your work down, hang oh, out. I'm so glad kid. you said that. Spend time lying on the grass or, you know, tumbling in the waves at the mm -hmm. beach. Do stuff, but do stuff that they want to do. Come to their level, build relationship and build relationship not by doing and fixing, Build relationship by being, by hanging, by, by um, sometimes doing nothing. And that's so tough for a dad. A dad battles with that. Well, you know, wh what was the point of just lying, looking at the stars tonight, you yeah. know, on a sleeping bag on the grass? What's the point? I mean, it is, it's going to save you during the teenage years. So if you focus now on building relationships, bonds, that are outside of performance and doing. And it really is that, that wu way, you know, that, that hanging space, that, that place yeah. of non-doing, um, that place where you just bond because you're enjoying each other, you know, and, and enjoying the time together. Focusing there, if you get that bond right, it's a much easier transition into the teen years because teenager already feels that he trusts you. Um, your daughter already knows that you're the go-to, you know, to, to, that she can speak to you, that you're there, that you're non-reactive. So if you're working um, in, in, in building that, then it's going to help us to uh, trust them and let go of, of things. But, but I do want to say one thing. What do we do? What's the most important thing to do as parents to stay firm? All moms at right now of little ease need to work out their own values. What are your values? What are, what's important to you? What are you trying to achieve from your parenting? What is your parenting intention? What values are you standing on? Do you, do you actually act on those values? Do you play out those values in the home? Go to your values and do not forget that family values and personal values are two different things family values are easy to rattle off we can all talk about caring and sharing and you know talking nice nicely to each other or having fun together we can talk family values very easy about trusting and listening and but personal values are more difficult to get to what are your personal values and you can google any list or you can even send it out on Facebook, like a list of values, or I can give you a list of values. And you just kind of go through question, but it's not just about naming them. Like I, I wanted to say, um, spirituality is a, is a great value of mine. It's no use me just naming it if I'm not doing my meditation every day, if I'm not seeking out communities where I can fulfill this value, we need to actually be able to act on the value. So once we know our values, um, and those are the things that are worth fighting for. So we can say, don't sweat the small stuff. Like these are our family values and this is the stuff I'm going to fight yeah. around and this is the stuff I'm going to put the boundaries in place because this is our family. Because the family does have to have an identity. Yeah. No matter how much your teenager is pushing against it, your family can stay firm in, in its own values and, and, and identity. Sorry, a bit long-winded. I'm so sorry. No, no, I love it. And yeah, and as you're talking, I'm just thinking, I think it's such a nice, maybe an activity for, and, and if anyone that's watching is interested, maybe put it in the comments. Either Megan and I can send you a list of values. And I think, I mean, what a nice opportunity at the dinner table or having some family time to 
each have a different color highlighter or pen and on the same sheet of paper highlight what values are important to each person in the family and and try and find a way to to merge them all you know and if your teenager's value is a bit independence or having space and alone time um, and your value is family time then, together time yes because yeah. <laughs> i'm guessing that that's how it's going to be like finding a way to kind of bridge those two um yeah and, and because i think as you said i think values are so important and and often as mums we we forego those values for our family and then we get to a point where we're feeling stuck and passionless and and empty and unfulfilled um, and that is because none of those values and those needs and those things that do fill us up whether it's friendship or outdoor time or alone time or family time when you're not getting them you do feel like life is just a little bit flat. frustrating yeah. yeah yeah beautiful i love everything you're saying and and you know i i i can't really add more to what i'm what i'm saying around around that topic let me just see what i, I wrote here um um um, um yes i think i think that what parents worry about the most is that our kids are going to go off the rails and make yeah. the wrong choices i mean that's the thing that's yeah. that's the main thing you yeah. know and and guess what we can't control that but but we can have homes that really are nourishing places places where our teenagers feel that they belong they love they listen to um it's 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 a place they can come back to to find someone to talk to someone who believes in them mm -hmm. so that is why it's about forming relationship first and foremost because yeah. we are not going to be able to control our children's lives as they hit the teen years mm -hmm. and if we are doing trying to control we're going to have a tough time, mm. a really tough time. And, and I mean, I've just seen that over and over and over with the moms who do want to just fix and control. It's, yeah. it's not possible during the teen years. And, and I mean, on, on that topic, so let's go there about fear and, and those fears. And like I said, I think that that's, that is the biggest fear that we get to the teenage years and we realize that we've really messed up. Like our, our kids are doing things that we don't agree with. Um, and from what you said, some of those fears are relevant, it sounds like. They, they can happen no matter how good of a mum you are, no matter you know, how much effort you, you put into it. Um, so what do we do when we get to those teenage years and we just realise our, our teenager is off the rails? They're not coming home and we... And we well, they're just saying no. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I mean, when you do this, no. Yeah, and, and worse than that, I mean... Topics like drugs or, you know, when they're, when they're really doing things that, that hurt us, hurt families that we know. Yeah, I think the, 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 the first numero, you know, and I, I know our time's running out. So the, the main thing is lower your anxiety. That I, I cannot, I cannot emphasize that enough. Parents have to lower their anxiety. No matter what's going on, face where your fear is coming from, what's being triggered in you, and lower your own anxiety. You will never make good parental decisions from a place of high anxiety. Yeah. Um, don't let yeah. your imagination run away. Like, now my son wants to stop maths, therefore he's going to be a loser for the rest of his <laughs> life, you know. So we've got to stop exaggerating, stop overemphasizing, normalize, lower your anxiety, come present, be here now, and, and then from there do the best you can. But if, if I had one psychologist come and give a, a talk to a group of moms, big group of moms, and he just said, if I could get all of you right now to lower your anxiety, and I could wave that magic wand and say, mm -hmm. just lower your anxiety, stop fretting, stop worrying, and, and, and actually stay in that place. He said, I walk out this room now and my job is done. And, and I thought deeply about what he had said. And it's, it's absolutely true. If we could come from a place of more calm, um, 
more, more um, I don't want to just say love because then it just sounds so mamby pamby, but, but yeah. from calm, from a place of trust, from a place of trusting this great organizing principle of the world, trusting our own soul journey, trusting our daughter's soul journey, trusting that that kind of life has you um, in, in this beautiful, unbelievable mystery that's just kind of unfolding. So if we can calm ourselves down, then once we can do that, we can access our intuition, we can access our higher order thinking. We can go back to our parenting intention and say, what's my main intention? To stay in relationship. Yeah. It's not to, you know, rush around making my, my daughter perfect. It's to stay in relationship. That's my parenting intention. Yeah. So you go back there. So, but it needs you to calm down. Otherwise, because as you know, um, Christy, if you wired up and freaked out and, jumping to conclusions and over-exaggerating. We can't use this beautiful prefrontal cortex. We can't use our wonderful intuition. So I suppose if that's the best, if I can do it, and I mean, I know I can just see teenage moms rolling their eyes and just say, all you're telling us to do is calm down. How can we? You know, my son's yeah. doing this or my daughter's doing that. But start with calming yourself down first. I love it. And, and I mean, I, I think, again, and I keep taking this back to, to toddler years because it's where I, I'm at, but I think that those type of lessons, we, we learn them from, or we can take opportunities from when they're young, you know, and I know your book and, and all your work is geared at teens, um, but again, I think this information, as soon as it get, I mean, if I was a toddler mom, I want to read your book, you know, because I think that yes. the earlier that we know that stuff, the more that we can create those neural pathways to stay calm in high intensity situations, the easier time we're going to have when, when it's our teenager. Um, I know, I know, I know that, that you have to get going. Can you, uh, no. can you quickly, <laughs> just one bit of parting information for us. I know we also, we haven't really touched on the, um, the reparenting stuff. So if it's, if you, a little bit of passing information on that. Oh, well, maybe that will have to be another talk okay. altogether later. Okay. <laughs> Reparenting. Let's, let's yes. do another talk. Okay, just, just one, one final. Yes, I think that the thing, what could you do now? If you're at home with little ease, what could you be doing now? So the first thing is what you've said, working on your own self-regulation and finding ways to be more present and, and not jumping to conclusions. So, so sort of being with where your, your child's at, that's the first thing. Second thing is I'd encourage contribution. So if I wanted to be pair a teen ready, I would have been more involved in helping my literally my five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 year old, 11 year old to contribute. And sometimes we don't have the time. Sometimes it's easier for us just to do it. Don't stop. If, if your daughter says, mom, I wanna help you with the baking, stop, drop everything, say yes. Oh, it's a yeah. mess, you gotta clean up, you know, it's awful, the cake's wrong, you know, that's okay. So, so contrib put contribution, way over the outcome and that doesn't matter what the contribution is like I don't want to do the shopping today mom you know or or mom um let me sort out you know I, I don't yeah. know whatever your 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 yeah. if your son or daughter comes out I want to lock the house or whatever let them do it mm -hmm. absolutely the contribution is important and I know it's quicker and easier for us to do it so number one two work on your values now you can't do that during the teen years. You just cannot. So a lot of talk again about values. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know the biggie, communication. Listening, talking, sharing, and bringing ourselves into it. Please bring ourselves into it as, mm -hmm. as adults. Where are we at? What's going on for us? how we're feeling using loads of feeling words. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling frustrated today. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling um, confused. And this is why, you know, not dumping on our kids. And we all know the difference between dumping on our kids and, and sharing, yeah, you know, sharing. sharing is really contacting how you're feeling, sharing it, talking, talking about your daily experience, talking about your own struggles, 
And as you have rightly said, talking about our own failures, mm -hmm. essential, absolutely Lovely. essential. Ah, oh, thank you, Megan. Oh, where thank can you, your book? Where can we get your book? Where can we find out more okay. about you? So the, this, the, this book at the at um the moment you'd probably have to order it through exclusives. Okay. because they might not have it on the shelf um, but you can get it on take a lot and zoom um, and then of course there is the ebook available i have not done the audio and i really want to and i'm sorry i haven't i really do want to and i will get to that at at, at some point soon okay but so online and where can we find more about you if people want to follow you um, megandebayer.com megandebeer.com. My website has a lot of resources, a lot. And if you go to the section that says advice and you click on advice, lots of videos, lots of articles, lots of information there. And I also have put together an online, automatic online um, parenting course. Um, and that's, it, it, you can find it through, through my website. It's not sitting on my website, but you can find it through my website. So any moms that, are, that want to do that parenting course, if you've got teens in the home, I recommend um, it. Amazing. Okay. And I've been on the so much great information. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank and you. And I enjoyed being with you. And I loved everything you asked and spoke about. And well done with the group. It's awesome. Looks like an awesome interactive group. Thank so, you. And we need the support. We can't do this alone. I know. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I love the information that we can get to answer. I mean, can I take a quick picture of us so that I can. Um, yes. Yes. Divine. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> oh, the van. Perfect. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. And I'll chat to you. Okay. Soon. I hope Bye. we can talk about reparenting at some stage. Okay. Bye. Bye.